it, you know, these things are, are self-perpetuating in some cases. Yeah. Now, you also teach classes on storytelling and writing. How long have you been doing this, and is that primarily for school-age kids or adults? I, I do it for both, um, primarily school kids and usually... Um, you know, a little bit higher grades, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fourth and fifth up through high school. Um, I also, uh, I was the director of our drama department at my church for about uh, seven or eight years, and so I incorporate a lot of the things in with it. Uh, we just finished a couple of workshops but right before I came here at one of the local schools. And um, I try to just, I, I do a variety of workshops. Some of them are little short mini workshops, mm -hmm. and some of them are like artists in residence things that last the whole week. Mm -hmm. um, and in those cases, I actually we actually have the kids create stories and do different things like that. What um, what's your favorite age group? My favorite age group is probably like about fifth through eighth grade. Uh, I worked with middle schoolers for about twelve years. I was the director of our eighth grade Sunday school at my church, and uh, so I'm real real familiar with middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the little bit older kids simply because I can get into some really meaty things mm -hmm. with them. You know, I, you can actually, I like doing the littler kids, but as far as actually being able to teach and, and instill ideas and motivate, that's the, the age groups I like the best. Now, the little kids, that would be where it would be more storytelling than, than teaching? Yeah, and even that, like for example, uh, Stinky the Skunk. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a story about uh, accepting other people. Um, Robbie Rabbit is a story about uh, consequences for actions. So even even with the younger ones, I'm teaching. It's just that I usually don't get specific on drug issues with the younger ones, mm -hmm. which I which I might. And it's, of course, it's not just Red Ribbon. I mean, I go places during Authors Week and Library Week and all, so there's a variety of different things on it. Any idea how many kids uh, um, have heard your messages over the years? At this point, I would say probably close to half a million. Mm. It was about, it was about 350,000 on book tour, and that was, that ended five years ago, so it's quite a few. What do you enjoy more, the teaching, speaking, or the storytelling? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because I combine them all together. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy workshops, but that's, if, if I was going to hierarchy them, that's probably at the bottom of my list. Um, the teaching and the storytelling are all in the same. They're all one. And so... Uh, I, I don't really separate between the two. Now, I, throw, I always have some stories in there that don't have anything. You know, just maybe a funny story or a ghost story or something. But primarily, all the stories, for the most part, are teaching. That's that's their whole purpose. And a lot of times, when I finish a story, we'll we'll have a discussion period where we go through. And on my CDs, I actually have when I finish a story. I'll have a question and answer session that teachers can use, where they can pause the CD and and the kids answer the question and they start it back again and, and you know, have the answer. Now after the, the book tour ended, um, how then did you work the, the kids' storytelling into it that, that takes you around the country now? Not nearly as easy as before. Uh, I have a certain amount of, of vacation time uh, during the year that I set aside. I always set aside Red Ribbon Week because I'm usually out of state for that. I try to reserve that for out of state things. Um, and I, it's, I, I'm on a rotating schedule, so I'm off different days of the week. I'm not off on weekends, hardly ever. And so sometimes I can combine, a, a, like a, I do a lot of two-day trips mm -hmm. or three-day trips where I'll fly to Alabama and do some programs for a day and fly back, and so I can kind of work around that a little bit. Now, when did you write the uh, the kids' books? Well, what led to that? Um, what led to them was Stinky the Skunk, for example. Um, there was I was in in I want to say Alabama, and I was in a school where, and outside of Birmingham, where they were having a good bit of racial problems at the time. 
And so I wanted a story that I could use primarily with with a little bit younger kids because I you know some things you want to begin teaching at a very young age that would teach acceptance of others and so I kind of thought well okay the least acceptable and I'll, I do a lot of animal stories because they're non-threatening you can tell somebody about an animal and you leave it up to them to transpose that into themselves so you can say this about anything you want and without getting anybody's backup or you know they don't know you're talking about them <laughs> and so I wanted a story that would would teach and since the skunk is like the least acceptable of all the animals I created a story where the skunk became accepted his differences became inconsequential and so that's how that story came about Robbie Rabbit um, I, I I saw how many kids did not understand that there were consequences for their actions. Negative consequences. Because in, in our basic new Disney age kind of thing, all children's stories almost always end with a happy ending. And I, I wanted a story that I could tell that, I, that the kids could realize, hey, there isn't always a happy ending if you make some bad choices. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Rob is like, which is quite interesting. Uh, this one is obviously the smallest little kind. It was actually done in a format, so it would be really inexpensive, so that a lot of kids could have it. Uh, one of the first times this story was told by somebody other than me, it ended up in uh, St. Louis in a senior high school class's um, time vault. Every 10 years, the, the, you know, the, every graduating class does a time vault, and 10 years later, another class opens it up, and a guy, one of the guys went to the school and told the senior class this story as a joke, kind of like, you know, okay, guys, sit on the floor, I'm going to tell you a little story. They liked it so much, and they said it had so much meaning to them of the consequences for actions kind of thing that they asked him if they could get a copy to put in their their time vault hmm. so you, you never know you never know how different people are going to receive a story now are are these books available where you know, like in a bookstore people can buy them or, um or you they used to be available around? at barnes and nobles the easiest way to get them is through uh greenville family partnership and um, if anybody's interested that sees this, if, if they want to contact the Aurora Youth Department, is that what it's called? <laughs> uh, they, can, they can get them all that information. Or my website uh, is my name, John Lasne, L A S N E, dot com, and the information is on there also. Okay. Any idea how many have been sold so far? Hmm. I really don't have any idea on those. I. I I know that Robbie has become an extremely popular book with counselors, mm -hmm. and people have been ordering those by the dozens and dozens. I really have, I, I don't have to ask a good question. I have to ask <laughs> people that know that how many of those have sold. Now, when did you write those two, Stinky and Robbie? Um, Stinky was about 90, it was the earliest, 98. And Robbie was about 95, I think. So You've some, won, won some awards for your books. Tell us about those. Well, um, the Red Ribbon has won uh, a National Addy Award, um, which is an award for advertising and it, tied in with the Red Ribbon promotional stuff. Um, it's also won uh, the... Helenot Keating Library and Synagogue, or Church and Synagogue Library Association Award. Um, it had the book has also won um, just won this year just won the Pegasus Award, which is an award for uh, books that promote and teach uh, storytelling. Uh, it can be used in storytelling as a teaching tool. Um, I've gotten several. Uh, you know, awards for different things to do with it, but but that's the, the book has done real well. It's just got a lot of national. I uh, also got a in Canada. It received the Hemlock Award, uh, which is an award that goes to publishers, book publishers, and printers.